morning. Welcome. I'm Pastor Hearn. This is Sister Phyllis, who will be interpreting the service today for our deaf friends. We're coming to you live stream from Memorial Baptist Church, Sterling Heights, Michigan. Thank you for tuning in this morning. I want to ask God's blessing. We give thanks, first of all, for the answers to prayer and his blessings uh, that we've all enjoyed this past week. And that this time together would be a comfort and encouragement and a challenge to us all. So let's join our hearts together in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. And again, we say thanks. Thanks for your blessings that we've enjoyed this past week. Thank you for the comfort that you have ministered to those in need. Lord, we thank you for answered prayer. We thank you for the strength you've given to so many. And now, Lord, we commit this time together. Thank you for the technology we can use to share and encourage one another. We ask for your blessing now as we celebrate and worship together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, enjoy the songs, and I'll see you back here in a few minutes. Let's worship together.
This is my father's world. church family. We're thinking about this is my father's world as the scripture says in Psalm 24. So right after Psalm 23 when it says the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want. In Psalm 24 it starts with the earth and everything in it, the world and all its inhabitants belong to the Lord. And there are moments in time and moments in history when the world forgets. And the world has been reminded that it is God's world. He can do as he chooses. He can stop the virus. He can choose not to. He can let us live in our brokenness until we learn lessons. And so that's my on point message the whole time is let's learn our lessons well and let's remember that God is sovereign. He owns all of this, but we are responsible for the things that we do. And all around the world, Things are happening that are fascinating to me. I've come from an international board trustee meeting to get news that you're never going to see on Fox, you're never going to see on CNN, you're never going to see on BBC. Not news that comes from the nations that says this. God is at work. There is a revival going on in a land in Africa where worship services are being broadcast nightly. They have the Prime Minister has given the opportunity for the church to come together, all different brands of the church to come together and broadcast nightly. Judges, doctors, leaders are on their knees begging for forgiveness in this nation, in Africa. Pray as the God who owns this world stirs people up. And he, he used that Prime Minister in that country to bring about a change because world leaders are responsible for what they do. And as he used that prime minister, may he use each of us to declare the word of the Lord. Dry bones becoming as flesh. Though the wrong seems off so, so long, God is the ruler yet. And so we can say, God is going to do something, but me and you and every missionary, and every pastor, and every world leader is responsible for what they do right now. So we are responsible to pray for our world leaders and to pray that God will stir in more hearts as he did the prime minister of that country I was talking about 
that he will stir in us to cause leaders to do the right thing and to call people to worship and to call people to repentance. Let's learn our lessons well while we're in time out and see what our dad will do with us. Let's pray. Father, I do thank you that you love us and I thank you that you are at work in the world even when we're sitting in our rooms wondering what you're doing. I thank you that you are a dad who knows how to take care of his children and that in the process of taking care of his children, he takes care of others as well. And Father, we do pray that you'll stir in the hearts of kings and prime ministers and presidents and dictators and governors and pastors and all people of influence to call people to worship the Lord, to honor the Lord, to repent, and to see God at work. You're doing something that we have not seen in our lifetime, and we trust you with it. And we trust you with our own selves. And we pray, Lord, that you can trust us to do what you called us to do in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, thank you for tuning in. We're glad to have you this morning. If you want to get your Bible ready, we're going to look at several passages of Scripture. This past few weeks, if you've been watching the news, 
You've seen a lot of protests. You've seen a lot of power struggles here, even in our own Michigan government. Politics is continuing to uh, turn ugly. And in the midst of all these things, we're challenged as Christians. What is it, as we live by faith and seek ways to share our faith, is what is our response to all of these things, the, pro the protests, the power struggles? And so this morning, I want to look at two great credible sources from the Bible. The first one being the Apostle Paul. So if you have your Bible ready, turn over to Ephesians chapter 2 and find verse 19. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. The Apostle Paul was one who was a citizen of Rome. And he valued that citizenship. And with that citizenship came many, many privileges and rights. Much perhaps as what we enjoy as citizens of the United States. It comes with lots of privileges and lots of great rights. And so Paul is a great credible servant, source to help us understand as Christians, what about these rights and these privileges that we have as citizens? So here's what he has to say in verse 19. If you'll follow along in your copy of God's word. He said, now, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. Think about what Paul is saying with me for a few moments. He valued his citizenship as a citizen of Rome. All the privileges, all the things, that the rights that came along with that. But what he's saying here is he reminds us that to become a citizen of the kingdom of heaven, to be a part of God's family is greater than any citizenship, the privileges, and all the things that come with it that we can enjoy in this world. And so as Christians, we really have dual citizenship. The birth country... And then when we become a believer, a part of God's family, we become a part, a citizen of the kingdom of God. Now, in the United States, we have the Constitution and other, lots of other documents that remind us and declare that uh, we have rights and privileges as citizens of the United States. In fact, you might know this expression, we are guaranteed or declared the pursuit of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And uh, that is often quoted and shared, and it sounds so good. But what about as a Christian? What about us as kingdom citizens? Well, let's look at the Gospel of Matthew, and I want to cite several places where Matthew quotes Jesus. And so the Apostle Paul, first of all, reminds us that we're dual citizens, citizens of our birth country, and then citizens of the kingdom of God when we become a Christian. But now let's see what Jesus has to say about this thing about rights. Matthew chapter 16 is the first thing we want to look at that Matthew records Jesus' take and teaching on this idea of citizenships. Verse 24, you'll find Matthew 16 Verse 24. Now Jesus is teaching and he's trying to prepare his disciples for his departure. And so he wants his disciples to have the clearest and best understanding of what it is to live as citizen of your birth country as well as citizens of the kingdom of God. So here's what he says, chapter 16, Matthew, verse 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone wants to come with me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life because of me will find it. What will it benefit a man if he gains the whole world and yet loses his life? Or what will a man give in exchange for his life? 
Jesus teaches that it's good that we're a citizen of whatever country we we're born in to enjoy those rights and those privileges. But Jesus helps his disciples and for us today to recognize as a part of the citizen in the kingdom of God, we're called to a higher calling. And so as a Christian, Jesus challenges us, deny yourself. Turn away because God has something awesome, wonderful for us. And so if we'll deny what we want and take up his cross, that is to focus our priorities on what God is doing more than what we want and follow Christ, then that higher calling will not only bless us, but it'll lead us as we minister and live out our faith. And so <clears throat> the first thing Jesus would remind us, as well as his disciples of that generation, is that, yes, it's good to enjoy our citizenship of whatever country we are, but God calls us to a higher calling, something far beyond what we can imagine, not just for here and now, but for eternity and has such great value as citizens of the kingdom of God. It's a higher calling. Well, let's look at our next scripture of Jesus teaching Matthew chapter 20. If you flip over just a few pages in your Bible, Matthew chapter 20, verse 20. Very interesting story because at this point, Jesus has spent probably at least three years teaching, training his disciples to carry on his work. And at this point, uh, the disciples, uh, as they're thinking about uh, all that they've given up, all that they've uh, sacrificed in following Christ, uh, one of their mothers approaches Jesus. And so let's look at this story because Jesus uses this story to give us more insight on what it is to be a citizen of the kingdom of God. Chapter 20 of Matthew, verse 20. Then the mother of Zebedee's sons approached him with her sons. She knelt down to ask him for something. What do you want? He asked her. And this is Jesus responding. Then the mother said, promise, she said to him, that these two sons of mine may sit on your right and the other on your left in your kingdom. But Jesus answered, you don't know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I'm about to drink? We are able, they said to him. He told them, you will indeed drink my cup, but to sit on my right and left is not mine to give. Instead, it belongs for those to whom it's been prepared for my father. Now, interesting side note, when the other 10 disciples heard this, they became indign indignant. Uh, that's an understatement. They became very angry, and I think for a good reason, because they probably thought, oh, why didn't we think of asking Jesus first? <laughs> because at this point, it's revealed, I believe, that the disciples, following Christ, all the sacrifices, and yet all the wonderful things they experienced, it's coming to a time where they're looking for their payday, their rewards. And certainly, living for Christ has great privileges and great rewards here and now, but for eternity is where it really matters. And the disciples are human like us, and they're thinking about, boy, this is the time when we uh, get the promises of uh, following Christ. Look what Jesus responded. He said, it's not for me to decide that, to give that to you, but my heavenly father. And so do you think the disciples were disappointed? And as a Christian, I think one of the great things as we're part of the kingdom of God is that God allows disappointment in our life. And one of the good things that comes out of disappointment and discouragement is it causes us to look at our priorities to look at what we really value. And the disciples were thinking about one thing and Jesus gets them to refocus and look at what's really important, especially in that moment. And that brings us to 
what Jesus then goes on to explain living the Christian life, the great privileges, the great rewards that we enjoy living as citizens of the kingdom of God. Look what he said. He goes on then to talk about in verse 25, still in chapter 20. So it must not be like those among you. On the contrary, whoever wants to become great must become your servant, and whoever wants to be first among you must be your slave. The Son of Man did not come to serve, to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. Jesus, in that disappointment, in that request, refocuses the disciples to what's really important, and it's the same for us today. In spite of the protests, people demanding their rights, all the things that are going on, uh, the struggle we have of staying at home and all these things, it's a good time for us to refocus what's really important now as well as thinking about eternity. Well, I believe Jesus first caused his disciples to think about their mission. Think of the privilege that God has given to us. You know, God could think the thought. He could snap his fingers he could speak the word and it would come to pass. And yet, have you ever thought about why does God choose to invite us to be a part of his wonderful plan, to be on mission with him? All our faults, our failures, we struggle, we stumble. And yet God has chosen as citizens of the kingdom of God to work in and work through us, to invite us to be a part of his mission. What an awesome blessing and we get to share our faith, to be a part of what God is doing, and to see others come to faith in Jesus Christ. And so Jesus redirects his disciples to say, guys, this is what's really important. Don't be like others who are in it for themselves, who want to exercise power. He's saying, join me on mission. Copy my example. Become a servant. And in that servant ministry, we can have the wonderful privilege of sharing our faith and seeing others come to faith in Christ. Secondly, he reminds them that we too have the greatest message to share today. I know people are, are looking at all these conspiracy theories. They're struggling for the power struggles that are going on. But in the midst of all that, what's really needed the most is a message of hope. What a blessing because of Jesus Christ who suffered, died, was buried, and resurrected, has defeated death, hell, and the grave. We have the greatest message to share. And God has given us the privilege and the opportunity to share that message over and over again, a message of hope. Hope in Jesus Christ. Now, the world offers a little bit of hope, we can have hope, but then people let us down. We can have hope in things, and they'll break or fail. But the greatest thing is Jesus Christ never fails. He's been victorious. And we can share that message of hope in Jesus Christ. What a privilege. What a blessing to be a part of the citizens of the kingdom of God. Is that God has invited us to join him on mission to share this wonderful message of hope. And most of all, he's gifted each one of us as followers of Christ with the abilities, the spiritual gifts to share in so many wonderful ways. Now, one of the things many of you are gifted uh, to share in special ways, uh, all of us realize our weakness and our struggle when we first started really trying to share with this technology and live stream, I'm so grateful for all the people God has surrounded us in our church with these special abilities and gifts so that we can bring to you today live stream the wonderful message of hope in Jesus Christ. I'm so grateful for how God gifts so many wonderful people in so many wonderful ways. What a privilege to be a citizen of the kingdom of God. <clears throat> with that, I want to close with this challenge. Let's ask ourselves, 
as the worry and the anxiety. And they asked Jesus, what, what's more important? And Jesus shared a wonderful story of how to deal with the worry. And he wraps up that story. You'll find it in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, when he says, Kingdom of God, seek him first and his righteousness. And then all these other things that you worry about will be provided for you. That's a good challenge for us today. As I know many have anxiety, many are worried, many are struggling uh, financially, uh, emotionally, all these things. Refocus. This is the time. Look to Christ. And looking to him, we can seek him and his righteousness. That's meaning, let's strengthen our relationship with the Lord through Jesus Christ. And then with that, the other things he will help us with. So the challenge we have to ask ourselves today, so many who are struggling about the protests, about your rights, and it's good to have these things, but ask yourself this morning, what's more important? the rights, to protest, and to get involved. Yes, we need Christians in all areas of government and life and society. But don't miss out. What's the most important thing for now and eternity? It's to become and live out as a citizen of the kingdom of God. Let's pray and ask God to help all of us look within our hearts and lives. And maybe this is the time to refocus. What is the most important thing to you this morning? Lord, I come to you and thank you for the blessing of your word. Thank you for the teaching of your son, Jesus Christ, the Apostle Paul. Lord, help us at this time to refocus. What's the most important thing in our life? Thank you for the rights and the privileges we enjoy as citizens of our birth country. But Lord, more importantly, I thank you for the privileges and the rights we have as citizens of the kingdom of God. And Lord, I pray right now that each of us would draw closer to you and strengthen our relationship. And perhaps, Lord, if there's one who's not sure about their relationship with you, I pray right now they would open their heart and life and invite you in and they would become a citizen of the kingdom of God, a follower of Jesus Christ. Thank you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We have a special song. Will you use this time during this song? Let it inspire, comfort, encourage you. And let's take inventory this morning. What's the most important thing in your life? Is it to get involved with a protest? There's a time and a place. Those things have a, a, an appropriate time. But what's more important? This is the greatest time and opportunity when God has invited us to be a part of his mission. To share a, share a message of hope for so many people who are struggling with anxiety and fear. And one of the great blessings he's gifted each one of us with ministry gifts. Let's all commit to focus and find ways using all this wonderful technology and some good old-fashioned methods of reaching out and encouraging and comforting and challenging the people in our lives. Use this song and let God inspire you to respond to him in whatever way you need. I'll be back in a few minutes.
Thank you for joining us this morning. If God has spoken to you, we'd love to hear about it. You can call the church and leave us a voicemail. On Facebook, you can reply and we'll see your comments, appreciate your feedback, and uh, email us. And we'll be glad to pray for you and minister to your need. Most of all, use this time. Refocus. Let God become the most important thing in your life during this time, while we have this time and opportunity. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. I'd love to hear how we can pray for and minister to you. We have lots of opportunities coming up this week, today, and all the way through this week. Uh, check out on our website, all the different opportunities you'll see on Facebook, all the Bible studies uh, by Zoom. And our next time here live stream will be on Wednesday night, 655. So God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. Hang on just for about 30 seconds more. Enjoy the music. You'll see our contact information as well as support opportunities. So God bless you. Thank you. See you next time.